Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Today we'll be modeling a faucet, and this will be a first of a series of tutorials based around ArcViz, so architectural visualization. However, the objects we make should look great in uh, high-end environment projects, game cinematics, and VR walkthroughs as well. Um, some of these tutorials may be a little more intermediate, so if you find that they're moving a bit quick, I do have that beginner series I created, um, which I'll post a link down below, as well as um, all the low poly art tutorials are a great place to start as well. With that out of the way, let's jump right in and check this one out. All right, so before we load in our reference, which should be in a link down below for you guys, I wanna show you where I grabbed it from. So I was Googling faucets and I came across this website, I believe it's pronounced Grower based on the product video. And I'm not affiliated with them at all, but they do have some nice looking faucets. And the one I grabbed is called the Grower Plus. So if you want some more images, you will be able to find them here. Let's just minimize this. And now let's load in our reference. So tap the spacebar. We're going to load in our reference in the top, the front, and the side panels. Let's start with the top. Go up here to where your image plane icon is. Click on that, and you'll just need to navigate to where you saved your image. So I'm gonna select mine and open. And now let's do the same thing for the other panels as well. And there we go, now they're all loaded in. And the first thing I wanna do is, I'm actually going to scale up all these images. So let's box select everything, go into your scale tool, and scale it up. And the reason I'm doing this is, it'll help with the clipping, and that way we don't have to change the setting in the camera. All right, um, next thing I wanna do is, I wanna move these images out of the middle of the space. Um, we will be hiding it in this panel anyways, but it helps with the modeling for the other panels as well. So let's select the image, and I'm going to um, move it back. Oops, that's the wrong one. I want to select this one, move this one back, select this one, move it in the negative direction, and then this one I'll move down. There we go. All right, so now, um, if you look on the reference itself, you can see that it has three images. So there's one for the top, one for the front, and then one for the side views. And what we'll want to do is center them for their respective panels. So um, also um, for the front and the side views, we'll also want to make sure that it's sitting on that ground plane and we'll want to move these two together. So let's do that first. Select both of these images and then we'll go into one of these uh, panels by tapping the spacebar and then moving this down. All right, I think that's close enough. And now let's go back into our uh, three panel views, uh, three panel views, the four panel view, and then let's uh, select the top image. Um, let's expand that view. And now let's move this to the center. Um, to make this a little bit easier, we can move this pivot closer to this crosshair, press D on the keyboard, and move this over here. And then press D again, and that'll exit up the pivot edit. And now we just wanna move this over here. And up a little bit, and there we go. All right, that's centered. Let's tap the spacebar again. Next thing we wanna do is um, move the front reference. First, select your reference. And now let's move the pivot closer to here as well. Press D on the keyboard, move it over here, press D again. And now let's try and center this. We don't wanna move it on the Y axis because we already fixed it for both the front and the side views. We just wanna move it in this axis. All right, tap the spacebar. And now let's um, do the side view next. Select your image first, tap the spacebar. Let's move the pivot closer, press D on the keyboard. Press D again, and let's find our center at points, which is over here. And we'll wanna move this over here. Um, something about this side reference um, we'll wanna do is it's pointing in the wrong direction. So 
um, the reference needs to be flipped, rotated. So let's um, open up our channel box. Let's press E to go into our rotate tool. Um, it might be easier to rotate um, in the perspective panel. So I'm just gonna open this up, hold down J on the keyboard, and we'll wanna rotate this negative 90. There we go. So it's negative 90 in the Y. Right, so let's go back to here. And now let's go into our move tool again, and let's try and center this which it looks like it's pretty centered already, but I want to get it a little bit closer. Here we go. All right, so our references are centered. That's perfect. Um, next thing we want to do is um, the references are a little bit bright, so let's make it less bright, and also let's make it so that it doesn't show up in our perspective panel. So select your top reference, open up your attribute editor, and I'm going to lower my alpha gain to 0.5, you can make yours as bright as you want, right? And then click this circle beside display and it'll only show it in the um, panel we loaded it in. So now let's do the same for the other ones as well. 0.5, this one, and 0.5, and select this one. There we go. And then finally, what I wanna do is, let's open up the channel box. Let's put all these images on their own layer so that we can easily toggle the visibility. So select the top reference, select this last icon down here, which puts it on its own layer, and then we'll wanna double click the layer and name it. So I'm gonna call this the top ref layer. Click save when you're done. And then in this last box, click this a couple times till you get an R and that stands for reference. And now when you click off it, we can no longer select it and it's locked in place. All right, let's do the same for the other ones. Click the last icon, double click the layer. We'll call this one the front reference, where front ref is fine. Save, and then turn it to a reference. And then finally the side. And click the layer, double click the layer. Um, we'll call this side ref layer, save, and then turn it to reference. Right, so now our references are loaded in, loaded in, they're locked in place, and in the next part, we'll be able to uh, jump into the modeling phase. So see you all then.